Hello, and welcome to a review um, of anything. anything. <laughs> just, uh, I, I guess that's what we're calling these. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, let's talk about Colossal. Okay. So let's preface this. We saw this movie uh, last year. March 2016. It's 2017. 2017. <laughs> was, it, was it March, really? I think so. Oh, man. That was a long-ass time ago. So we saw this movie in, the, well, the most local theater that had it, um, because this is a limited-release kind of movie. It was not released everywhere. Um, synopsis, I guess without revealing too much, because I, I think it's kind of a movie that's nice to go in without knowing that much. Um, Anne Hathaway has an alcoholic problem, basically, and she's, well, soon her entire life is turned upside down as she runs into an old friend, as she moves back to her childhood uh, neighborhood, and things take a sudden turn when a giant monster begins attacking Seoul, South Korea, and she may be connected in some way. So, first time we saw this. We expected uh, an actual monster movie. Like this is putting our feelings pretty lightly. I think we did not like it our first time viewing. Yeah, but when we started doing uh, these movie reviews, we well we we wanted to review it, and before doing so, we were like, okay, let's just give it another watch and see if our opinions change at all from pretty much hating it to something else. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I wish I could say I, like, totally flipped and I was like, oh, I love this movie now. I kind of did. <laughs> it's... I, I feel like watching it Knowing that it what it's, I'll put this out there. It's not a monster movie. It is a it is a movie that has elements of a monster movie, but it's not a monster movie. And it's also, I, I think what did it in, for me initially was that, it was advertised, more as a monster movie. Yeah, like it was also advertised as a completely different genre. Like aside from monster movies, advertised as a comedy. A comedy. The marketing for the movie was just not good. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I think I saw like one trailer or TV spot or something. And then you were just like, hey, this movie's like playing at a theater that we can go to. Do you want to see it? I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, we also... Uh, it's, it's hard talking about our real feelings about this movie well, without getting into spoilers. We, so we'll be... we, when we went to see it the first time, we brought Dakota, who plays... Uh, Connor and Zone Fighter. You've seen him around in yeah. our videos. Um, he, he, we, he couldn't As make it soon as the credits but... came up, he, he, he practically ran out of the theater. This is like in like a sort of a local downtown yeah. kind of era. He was at our car to leave. <laughs> which is like a five minute walk to the car. He was there <laughs> before we even left the theater. He he hated the movie. And I gave him all the right and that, like, to have. Yeah, like, to be fair, yeah. we did too. Walking yeah. out of it. Uh, I, uh... Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about what we can get into without going into spoilers. Because I think the plot of this movie is best saved for initial viewing. Well, in the in the trailers, they even mention that they they say they show the link that she has with the monster. Yeah, and I I feel like it's almost better not knowing that. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, yeah. I we'll do this. If you if you've seen nothing about this movie, we'll tell you the way that it, it should be represented or marketed. Uh, we should do that. I think. Yeah. So like, we'll just First give that give that to you straight, and then if you have not seen it, like just stop. See it if you want to. If you yeah. if you don't care at all, then we'll to get into spoilers. Like, like I'll say this: go into it knowing that it's not a monster movie. It has monster elements, uh, but it that is not the purpose of the movie. For me, knowing that, seeing it the second time, I enjoyed it actually, 
uh, I found parts of the movie to be entertaining and I wasn't annoyed like I was the first time. Anne Hathaway is like he said, uh, she's an alcoholic, she's having problems, she moves to her hometown where she uh, discovers that at, at one night waking up hungover, uh, she discovers that a monster attacked Seoul, uh, South Korea, and she finds out that she has a connection to it, and that's just, what we'll say. We'll just leave it there. Yeah. Um, so her childhood friend in the movie is played by Jason Sudeikis, if that alone makes you want to go see the movie. Okay, yeah, I'll um, also say this. Jason Sudeikis isn't really an actor that I enjoyed, but after watching this movie... I really liked everything he did in it. Yeah. He well, he is the actor that stood out, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's, but like I think that's the best thing to leave. Yeah. Like if you're seeing movie. this movie, like if anything, see it from Jason Sudeikis' performance. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that, that's all the non-spoiler stuff we're gonna give. If you have any interest in seeing the movie, if you have not. It's on Hulu. It's on, if you got Hulu. on Hulu. You can get it on a home video at this point. Yeah. Um, just watch it if you're interested. And if you don't care, or if you've already seen it. Spoilers. Spoiler! Spoilers beyond this point. Um, so, in Hathaway's link with the monster is that, as a child, she had a school project. That was like a little diorama of Seoul, South Korea. As she's walking to school one day with uh, her childhood friend, Jason Sudeikis, they get struck by lightning. Yeah. And each of them is carrying a little respective monster toy <laughs> yeah. in their backpack. So, now, whenever Anne Hathaway walks in this little park that she got struck by lightning in, at a certain time, any day, she appears as the monster in South Korea. Yeah. The monster mimics every single action she does. The playground basically acts as, as a, yeah. like a little like city playground for Seoul. And later on throughout the movie, we learn that Jason Sudeikis can do the same thing as a different monster. As a robot. Yeah, a robot. <sighs> okay, so... Let's just say the bad things first, yeah. and then I'll probably say the only good things. Yeah, because my opinion on this movie has not changed too much. Yeah. I don't hate it as much, but I, I still think it's kind of trash. So, with the bad things, let's start with plot conveniences and oh plot holes. Oh my god. There is a lot of plot conveniences. That, that like flashback that we are just talking about? Should have just been left out. It would have been neat, like, I think, as just a mystery that it kind of happens. But, but they give this weird half-assed explanation that because they're struck by lightning... Yeah. I, I, like I said, I would have liked it if they just hadn't explained that, but I know that that would have gotten a lot of... A lot of people more angry at this movie. Yeah, but at the same time, it's also a limited release movie, so you're not really that worried about general audience reaction. Yeah. Uh, there's that. Mm. Also, plot convenience of... She has to be drunk, and she has to be at the playground, and it has to be at a certain time of the day. Yeah, how she finds out that it happens. The reason why she finds out is that on so her... when she comes back to live in her childhood neighborhood, yeah. Jason Sudeikis is like, "Hey, uh, I'll offer you a job at my bar." And bomb impression. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So, basically, her job at this bar with Jason Sudeikis and two of his friends. First, it, okay. Let's just cut this. The reason why she goes to her hometown is because she's an alcoholic and her boyfriend kicks her out of her house yeah, her, because he... He's sick of her shit. Essentially. He's like, you're drunk. You need to go. Go. He's played by Adam Wright, who plays the Beast in Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. 
Adam Wright. No, it's not Adam Wright. Oh, God, say, I want to look. I was going to say. Dan Stevens. Jesus. Dan Stevens. So, uh, yeah, she's living with her boyfriend, who's played by Dan Stevens, mm -hmm. who's the new beast in Beauty and the Beast. Uh, he essentially gets tired of her because she's an alcoholic coming in every day, hungover and drunk, and uh, is tired of her shit. Uh, she decides to move back to her hometown where she lives in her, her parents her parents house which I guess they leave empty over the summer yeah like, like, like completely empty yeah. to the point where she's sleeping on the floor or on an air mattress they probably explained this but we probably just did not care forgot about it like forgot it or did not care um and as she's doing that, uh, Jason Sudeikis offers her a job to work at the bar that he owns. Mm -hmm. uh, she, like her, her, their job there for a while basically just involves all of them getting drunk at the very yeah. late hours of the night. And uh, she gets drunk, starts wandering home, uh, gets to a playground, and falls asleep on a bench. Mm -hmm. So she wakes up at... Around like eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, eight o'clock in the morning, which is the perfect time that she needs for the monster to appear when she yeah. walks in the playground. So she's walking through the uh, playground, sees that, and uh, like, like she, she, she's, she's, she's just, like through, holding a bag the first time. She's carrying the air mattress that she she's, bought. Yeah, the air mattress. So she gets home and she like sleeps again, mm -hmm. I guess. And then so she turns on this TV that Jason Sudeikis brings her. <laughs> Or her laptop or whatever she yeah. has at this point. Yeah, and um, sees that... Uh, there's a monster yeah. that attacks Soul. And she's, like, freaking out. Or like, It's kind of weird how much she freaks out about the monster attacking Soul. I mean, I guess it could be because she's an alcoholic. But it's, eh. it's kind of weird. Cause she's like... <gasps> like, she, like, she calls up everyone, like, including her old boyfriend who just kicked her out. Wow, so unprofessional. Um, Shut up, little bitch. Sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, and she's like, "Oh my God, did you see a monster attacked soul?" And everyone's just kind of like, "Yeah." And like, yeah, we saw this. Um, and as you see in the news video, the monster is walking around mm -hmm. as if it was carrying a bag. So it becomes it becomes painfully obvious right from there that okay, she's the monster. And then she goes to work again and gets drunk again. And she, I don't even remember how she gets She to, happens to be in the exact same situation where she sleeps on the bench, wakes up the and, next morning, and walks across the playground. And this thing, though, is that she has this tick where she like, yeah, this is rubs her head. She like, kind yeah, like of. scratches her head, like the very center of her head. If you look at all the posters for the movie and probably yeah. the thumbnail of this video, she does this. And... Yeah, like, as you find out later, it's because she got struck by lightning, I guess, because, like, it hits her square in the head, and so that's her thing now. She just scratches her head because she got struck by lightning. And so, uh, she ends up seeing that on the TV, that the monster does the same head scratch thing. She then, uh, is like, she, yep, I control the monster. She gets... Which, this is something that I like about the movie, though. Like, when she gets everyone together to come to the playground, like Jason Sudeikis and all of his friends or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and she's like, okay, like, pull up this, like, live feed that people have now of Soul for when the monster appears. So she tells everyone to, like, whip out their phones or laptops or whatever, and she's, she, like, just starts dancing as the monster or whatever, and she's like, hey, look at your phones, now look at me. And, like, thankfully, they don't drag it on. They get, they're pretty much just immediately, like, yeah, you're doing that. Yeah, like to this, like the, that. I appreciated that because that easily could have been dragged out as a painfully long, long joke or explanation or like, something. Yeah, the scene consists of like her starting to dance. She's like, "Look at your phone," or they're looking at their phones, and she's like, "What is she's it?" Like, doing? look at me. She's like, dancing. "Like it's dancing." Look at me, looking at her dancing, and then Jason Sudeikis says, says, "What the fuck?" And then just it kind of continues just a little bit, and then they're like, "Wow, that's weird." And as yeah. she's dancing, she's falling, and Jason Sudeikis comes to... Well, before this, actually, there's helicopters. Yeah. There's helicopters that shoot at her, and she feels... She hits one. She hits one, or a helicopter shoots her with, like, a missile, and she's like, yeah, like, 
okay, okay, so she can feel. She can feel what the monster feels. Yeah, which. It's weird. But she gets it as, like, aches. Yeah. It's, like, a weird plot hole because then she falls over, like, drunkenly or whatever. And. This might be this one, or it might be the next time she pierces the monster. But yeah, she falls over drunkenly, and she, for some reason, doesn't like feel pain or anything. Uh, something like that happens. And um, so she freaks out. She's like, "Oh my god! Like, how many people did I kill?" Jason Sudeikis is like, "Don't worry about it." Well, what happens is like she gets hit. She's like about to like faint or whatever and then oh, yeah. she, she hits a helicopter yeah and she's like about to faint mm -hmm. and she's like about to fall over and jason jason sudeikis comes and like catches her and then it like cuts into a new shot where she like wakes up and she's like what happened blah 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 did like anyone die and jason sudeikis is just like don't worry about it yeah and then watching the news footage she sees that a robot appears and that robot is Jason Sudeikis. Sudeikis. Because he had the robot in his backpack. When they got struck by lightning. Which he didn't get struck by lightning directly, though, so... Yeah. Why? Yeah, Jason Sudeikis, uh, because he had that toy robot in his backpack, he's a robot now. Yeah, and so, from this point on, his character does a complete 180. First time watching, yes... Yeah, yeah, first time watching, because it's... His character does a complete 180 he, in the he, sense he that... He basically goes from being, like, a cool guy, like, hey, come work in my bar, like, I'll help you out, and he's, like, giving Anne Hathaway furniture and stuff. Yeah. While she's in this, like, empty house or whatever. Um, so once he finds out that he's the robot, all of a sudden, he becomes, like, just super, like, deceptive, super aggressive, and just... Like an all-around dickhead, really. Yeah. And first time watching, it just felt like what felt happened out of nowhere. Second time <sighs> watching, though. Be yeah, because the whole movie's about alcoholism, mm -hmm. which does, I guess, give it a bit more merit. The people's attitudes change. Yeah, like it, it, from a story standpoint, I think it makes sense. I think it's just more from a writing standpoint. Yeah. Then I'm just like, eh. it just does not do I, it for me. I will say this, though. Watching it a second time, and this is me trying to compliment the movie. I will say that the 180 degree turn is pretty drastic after he turns into a robot. Mm -hmm. But there is hints of it, like, from the get-go. Like, he does yeah. give off the impression that he's, like, just a good old average Joe, but he's... Yeah, there, there, a, there are very subtle hints, I guess, that he's, yeah. that he's not really, like, all there. He's a really passive-aggressive kind of guy. Uh-huh. Which... Like, from the get-go, he even does, like, some passive stuff. Yeah, like, like, like toward his friends or whatever, when one of yeah. them starts hitting on Anne Hathaway, he, he's just sort of like, dude, what are you doing? Like, the first night that she's working at the bar or whatever, he's like, don't you do that in my bar. Which is yeah. like, like, okay... I get that, but, I mean, that could also just be taken as him, like, being an overprotective guy. Yeah. Anyways, um, so, yeah, so, after he becomes the robot, he starts having fun with that. And so he starts... He starts, like, sort of, like... Drinking more. He starts drinking more, and, like, he goes to the park himself once he figures that out. Like, hey, if I go to the park at the same time, I can be the robot. So, yeah, whenever Jason Sudeikis... Uh, yeah, yeah. Finds so, out he's the robot. He, he starts to drink more. He starts like looking forward to going to the park. Yeah, he like, like there's one time like Anne Hathaway like, t like wakes up in her house and turns on the TV or whatever. Because once Jason Sudeikis turns into the robot and starts drinking more, she becomes a bit more sober. Yeah. Um. So she like is like back to sleeping in her own house. She's not waking up on the park bench or whatever. So she like turns on the news and she sees, um, no no no. This is when she's hooking up with his friend. Yeah. So, um, Anne Hathaway hooks up with one of Jason Sudeikis' friends who works at the bar. And she wakes up the next morning, and she's like, Oh my god, look what Jason Sudeikis is doing. And she's like, Oh my god, get your clothes on and stuff. So they, so they, they go to the park. They hop and into the car, and uh, Jason Sudeikis and the guy from Holes, one of the camp counselors yeah. from Holes. Yeah, that's all, that's all his character is. Uh, um, they're both like... Jason Sudeikis is like sort of like taunting... Yeah. This little bank building or something like he's got you can't see me but he's got like his foot hovering over it like oh I'm gonna get you whatever yeah um, 
and yeah, like the other guys, I like, got the iPad going, which yeah, yeah. And so Anne Hathaway and um, her like not boyfriend just hook up, yeah. I guess. Um, fuck buddy, come there. And Jason Sudeikis is just sort of immediately like, oh, what are you doing with her? Because he has that like yeah, we, we said the passive aggressive comment earlier when he's trying to hit on her at the bar. Um, so Anne Hathaway is like. Like, no, 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 what are you doing? This is dangerous. Like, people are going to die because obviously she's down. She's getting sober. She's like, she realizes that she killed people when she fell over. So she's like, okay, don't do that. And Jason Sudeik is like, fuck you. I do whatever I want. And so he just, like, keeps doing it. And Hathaway comes over and because this is the, that time of day, she turns into the monster. She, she slaps him. She slaps him. Like, just the hardcore bitch slaps him and then she's like, get out. And then he, like, walks away, and this is where he really becomes, like, a different person. Yeah, this is the turning point. Yeah, so he, she sees him at, like, the bar later on that day, and uh, he has, like, a beer ready for her, and they're all, like, sitting at the table where they used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, he calls out the guy from Holes that he's for, for doing cocaine in the bathroom or something he starts calling out everyone yeah on all of their shit basically in an attempt to like cover himself up yeah for trying to like mess with korea basically mm -hmm. what does he do for the the fuck buddy i think just call out that he was being a fuck buddy to Anne hathaway yeah and that guy just kind of disappears from the rest of the movie. <laughs> yeah from that Who point cares? on he's gone um and, um and so jason sudeikis is just sort of like like okay um like Anne hathaway's character what was her name? Gloria. Sure. But that was her name, Gloria. Um, so he's like, Gloria, like, go put up that projector or whatever. And she's like, like why? He's like, because I told you to. Like, I'm your boss. And before this, he's not really, like, giving her any orders yeah. at the bar. She literally works there to drink. Um, and yet, like, all, like, the other guys are trying to be like, like, I'll just put the projector up or whatever. He's like, no, no, no. I want her to do it. And so... This just turns into this long-winded scene where it's not a bad scene. Yeah, Jason Sudeikis is the saving grace of this He's, movie. He saves this movie. Well, he tries all of his might. For some reason, to save he his, put all of movie. his acting if talent you, into this movie. If you if you want to see anything from this movie, Jason Sudeikis' performance is pretty worth it. Yeah, it's the only reason. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so. Eventually, uh, they get into a big argument. They get into an argument, and uh, Jason Sudeikis is basically like, I'm "Like I'm gonna keep doing this. If yeah. You want, if you want to keep your job, yeah. Because um, aren't we missed the best scene? The most irresponsible thing you can do in this bar. That, no, that ha happens after oh, because, after? yeah, they actually fight. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They fight, they fight in Korea. Yeah, because they're like talking, blah blah blah. They drag it on, end up going to the, uh, to the, park, and mm -hmm. actually like fighting, uh, yeah. where she gets like knocked out, and he starts like stomping on like the city and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and uh, Dan Stevens. So stomping on the city scene. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Um, so obviously this is not a major release movie, but the CG in it is. It's pretty good it's for pretty good. having a low budget. Like, it's kind of Pacific Rim quality, I would say. Like, obviously, there is very, the very minuscule monster. The robot isn't, eh. Yeah. The monster, detail-wise, looks the, good. The monster is basically a giant Groot. It, it actually looks like an Ultraman monster. It kind of looks like a weird Gyango from Ultraman, but like from a, like the first first generation. Yeah, Gyango, like the totem pole monster with like the long ears or whatever. Kind of. Kind of looks like that, but a tree. Cross that with Groot. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, beside the point. So, after Jason Sudeikis and Anne Hathaway had their little brawl or whatever. Yeah. Jason Sudeikis is like. She's on the. Like, she's on the ground. She's on like the ground. Crying. Yeah. And that the shot is of her head, and as she's like crying, she's like crying. Jason Sudeikis just comes over with his <laughs> shoes, and just like stomps on the sand, like. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
and you can hear like the sound effects of like it's, people in South Korea. Yeah, like like it's the nineteen fifty four stomp sound effect almost that's yeah. playing as he's like stomping around. And oh. it, it's obviously supposed to be played for dramatic effect, and obviously they don't have the budget to show him doing that. It just kind of comes off as silly, the wrong way. silly and super cheesy. Yeah, and after that happens, uh, Dan Stevens shows up again. He he, he's comes like, to, like coming to see how Gloria is doing, basically. Yeah, and he sees that you know, oh, you're not drinking really anymore. Yeah, blah, she's, blah, yeah, she's blah. like, oh, like, oh yeah, I have a job. I'm taking care of myself. And, and so, my boss is keeping me captive. <laughs> yeah. Um, so her ex-boyfriend comes to the bar. And she's working there, obviously. So Jason Sudeikis, though, just, like, sits down and, like, has a chat with her, with him. Um, and he's, like, still ordering Anne Hathaway around or whatever to, like, get him drinks or whatever. And, like, you get the poor guy who just wants his coffee. Yeah, there's, like, a guy in the back. He's like, I just want a I, beer. I, I, I just want my coffee. Jason Sudeikis just keeps saying, like, one minute, buddy. Yeah. And this leads us to the... I guess best scene. Of it's probably the best. Probably scene. the best scene in the movie. Um, the most irresponsible thing you can do in this bar. Yeah. It's just this huge he, monologue by Jason. And he's like talking about how like people can get in fights or he can mm -hmm. piss on a table or something like that. Yeah, but none of those are the most irresponsible thing in the bar. And so he brings out this huge ass firework. Mm hmm. Like a bunch of firecrackers, essentially. Mm hmm. Like like a like fountain firework or whatever if you guys have seen one of those um so he's like like yeah we my buddies and i got this firework we're gonna use it for something special but it just never came around and so he just keeps monologuing to Anne hathaway's boyfriend lights up the firework everyone or he's like throwing chairs everywhere in preparation it's, for this it's probably on youtube honestly if you're questioning this movie just watch that scene. Watch this scene if, and if, if, then decide for, whether or not you want to continue it's the, with the it. The peak of Jason Sudeikis' performance. Yeah. And it just shows how much he tries to save this movie. Mm hmm And it's not written that bad, too, compared to, like, the rest of the movie and such. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so he, like, lights off the firework as everyone's fleeing the bar besides and, Anne Hathaway and um, her ex-boyfriend. And he's doing this whole thing to prove that even after he does the most irresponsible thing in the bar, that she will still pick him over her ex. So he lights off the firework, the entire bar is like on fire. And ex-boyfriend is like, like, okay, we're going, Gloria. And she stays with Jason Sudeikis. Because, because if she leaves, if she, if she knows leaves, that he will keep destroying keep, the city. Mm -hmm. That's the threat. So it gets to the point where he, her ex-boyfriend leaves, and she goes back home. And Jason Sudeikis is there waiting for her. Yeah. And he's basically like, like, what are you okay, gonna, like, what are you gonna do? There is one scene that we're forgetting to put, where she goes to his house, and he's like a hoarder. Yeah, we yeah we missed that. We totally skipped over that. There's it's a part where Jason somewhere in the movie. It's after. After they. It's after they fight. The first time they fight. No. No, no, no. Because she slaps him, then that's the bar. I think we misplaced the stomping scene. Yeah. We misplaced the stomping scene. I think where that's supposed to go is where Jason Sudeikis is, is like back at his house and he feels bad about having killed people. Yeah. Kind of like Anne Hathaway. And he has like a, sort of a slight moment of redemption. And Anne mm -hmm. Hathaway's like, okay, no more drinking. No more like monster stuff in the playground. Obviously that doesn't work out. Based yeah. Based on what we've been talking Anyways, about. Anyways, that's like also a cool scene where it just shows that... There is at least a little bit of depth to his character. Yeah, because he like tries to like push all of this stuff onto her, which we've been seeing throughout the movie. As he's been bringing like his furniture over there and whatnot, um, and he like literally tries to bring like a whole like moving truck of stuff. Fast forward. Um, Fast forward. Yeah, we've we've misplaced something, but so she goes back home, and Jason Sudeikis is already there waiting for her, and he talks about how he's going to every day wait for her and make sure she doesn't leave or whatever blah 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 just like, to uphold the deal that they have that as long as she stays with him he won't destroy the city mm -hmm. uh and so she kind of has enough of it and says it's like you know what just fuck you fuck it essentially and they get into a little she... fight like not monster fight but argument like, argument at her house and she books a flight to 
we forgot another thing. There's something we're forgetting. <laughs> the message. So there's another thing. Before before she really like starts fighting Jason Sudeikis. Sudeikis. This, is, this is when she falls on the ground and like um it's like kill, the, kills some people. Yeah, it's like after the second time she and Jason Jason Sudeikis and her go to a South Korean shop mm -hmm. and they have the guy uh, like translate a message for her. And, and so she goes back to the playground and she like writes in, in the, the ground on in South Korea like I'm sorry, it won't happen again. And so, like, yeah, yeah, we just skipped. that's the scene we skipped. Blah blah blah. He'll probably add it in. Who knows? Um, so then she books a flight to South Korea, where uh, she the robot appears, uh, and then she walks. And uh, whenever she walks into the city, the monster appears at the playground. This is where Jake and I both agree that it kind of went from. An okay movie to, to just end. dumb. It's a dumb ending. I still think that it's a okay movie. Give it a watch, but the ending is kind of dumb. So the monster appears whenever she's in Seoul. She picks up Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, and chucks his ass across the, like the entire country. He literally yeah. does like a Team Rockets blasting off again moment. Yeah, where he just disappears into the sky, never to be seen again. And it's just kind of. Here's disappointing in the sense that it there is no eventual redeem to his character. Yeah, like, alcoholism's bad. Die. Yeah. And plus it doesn't even make sense plot-wise. Because the way they establish um, Anne Hathaway appearing in Soul as the monster is that the playground serves as Soul. If she's not in the playground, she's not in Soul. So by that extension, if she's in Soul... Shouldn't she only be in the playground? Who knows? <sighs> Who knows? It was dumb. Didn't make much sense. Um. So that's the movie, really. Pretty much. Um, but there is one thing we should probably add. Uh, is the history of this movie. Yeah, this will probably go in before the... Spoilers or something if we really want to add yeah, it like it that. Really Who cares? It's colossal. Who cares? Only 10 people are watching this right now. Um, I'll, so I'll leave this to you because you know more about this than I do. Right yeah. Now. Whenever the production began on this movie, like whenever they started selling the idea for someone to pick it up, uh, it is first ran into trouble because in their promotional poster, they actually used a picture of Godzilla and Toho sued them right off the bat. Yeah, I totally forgot about this, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and they got into trouble with that. Uh, there was some writing trouble. I know that. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, and there was some trouble with the fact that uh, the director mentioned that it was, like, the best monster movie of all time and that it was, like, better than, like, Godzilla movies and stuff like that. And so that, that really wasn't, like, a legal offense or anything that was troublesome. It's a personal offense. <laughs> it, it just got kind of people uh, got people on, talking about the movie. On edge and talking about it and it just gave the sense that the creator was kind of egotistical a bit. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it ran into trouble like even before it really was like getting filmed with Toho and stuff like that. But yeah, that's it. Uh, would you recommend? Based on what we said earlier in the non-spoiler section, if that was enough to sell you on the movie to go see it, go right ahead. Personally, I would just say if, if you have a rainy day with literally nothing better to do, nothing better to watch, give it a shot. Maybe you'll enjoy it. So my my opinion has not shifted much, but I'm definitely more toward it's it's okay. I I would really rather not watch it again. If I do watch it again, it's just gonna be to watch Jason Sudeikis kill it, cause he he's pretty damn good in this. So I, a way that I usually recommend movies is its rewatchability. Uh, I've seen the movie twice. I don't really care about seeing all of it again. I'll watch Jason Sudeikis' parts again, but that's probably it. 
The only reason we really rewatched it anyway was to do this review to see if our opinions changed at all. Yeah. If you see it once and you don't enjoy it, yeah. you're probably not going to enjoy it much more on a second viewing almost a year later like we did. It's an okay movie. It's a solid okay. If if you're like a mega fan of monster movies and you like you want to see like every monster movie that's coming out nowadays, this still isn't even for you in my opinion. Yeah. It's not a monster movie. It, like it like, has a monster in it. Yeah, I would say less than five minutes, really, of actual monster. I'd say there's time. more than that. There's like twenty fourteen. At time, least, I would say. yeah, at least ten. Yeah, although uh, like obviously, and that's like obviously every most one most of it is just the monster standing around, like doing Anne Hathaway's head tick or whatever. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, watch yeah. it for Jason Sudeikis. Don't watch it because monsters. Yeah, that's that's our verdict. I would say. Um, trying to think if there's anything else to talk about with this movie because there, there there was just a lot that we have to say about this movie. I think that's it. I think so. I'm gonna go with yeah. All right. What would you give it out of ten? Well, let's compare. After your first viewing, what would you have given it? First and viewing, probably like a, like a four. Okay, and then after second viewing? Like a six and a half to a seven. Uh, my and I, I'll say yeah. six and a half. <laughs> you heard it here first. Better than Monster Planet. Um, yeah, I watch it before Monster Planet again. <laughs> um, but... My first viewing, I would have given it like a three. Or I would now give it like a four, <laughs> four and a half. It's just, I don't know. After you see it one time, like, you know, it's more of, almost more of just a drama. Yeah. Like almost art house kind of movie than it is a monster movie, obviously. Monster movies obviously have a lot more rewatchability. You're like, yeah, watch those monsters fight. Once you see this, aside from Jason Sudeikis, there's not much to see again. Yep. So, yeah, that's what I would give it. That's really about it without reiterating the same points over and over again. Um, this, well, thanks again for tuning in to another review of any of anything and i play major league basketball and i'm a championship boxer we'll see you guys next time